Hey everyone, welcome to Five Star Guns and Gear, and this is our part two of our quest for accuracy on this FX Impact M3. We have a video that we put out that we just changed the first stage regulator out with a Huma uh, first stage regulator, and uh, I'll leave links to that that way you can go check it out. Today we're going to be installing the second stage regulator, and I'm going to show you exactly how that's done. Uh, Want to shout out to uh, Huma Air for uh, sending us this uh, regulator and helping us uh, with our quest of accuracy on this particular rifle. We're trying to get this set up and hopefully we'll be at RMAC uh, next year. We want to have this gun tuned, ready to go, in absolute in tip top shape. And uh, these Huma Air components is, in my opinion, are going to be the key to help us find the right accuracy reduce our extreme spread, have a lot better shot consistency, and our pellet speed should be a whole lot more consistent with these high precision regulators that Huma Air produces. So a uh, lot better quality uh, than what you're gonna get in your FX Impact, and it should make a huge difference in this. We went in and changed out that first stage rig, now the second step of this project, of course, is the second stage. This is what you will get when you order your second stage rig. You're going to get your regulator with the piston. It's going to be um, actually separate. I'm going to actually move this camera that way you can see. You're going to get a package of uh, Belleville washers, and they're going to have to be stacked in a specific orientation. I'll explain that to you as we get into this project. Really simple. Uh, straightforward it's not too difficult biggest thing safety first guys make sure you have no pellets in your gun make sure um, that you have your gun degassed and I'll show you a couple of ways to make sure that you are degassed properly because you do not want pressure on either side of that regulator we'll take care of that before we get started and actually the disassembly to change out this regulator I'll show you how to set the pressure on this regulator right now this first stage rig is set at 160 bar. That's what works good uh, for what I'm shooting. The second stage factory rig was set at 95 bar. So we're gonna shoot at that. Then we'll make any type of fine tune adjustments after that that we need to do. We may not have to make any adjustments at all. It may be spot on once we get it set. However, if we need to make adjustments, it's easy enough to make these adjustments. And I'll show you how to do that if you need to do that. So let's get started. Let me go ahead and get this camera spun around. Let's go ahead and uh, start breaking this gun down, depressurizing it, breaking it down, and let's get this new regulator installed. Okay, here we go. We're going to go ahead and start installing the uh, second stage regulator. And uh, just go over with what I got in with this is the, uh, this is for the uh, FX Impact M3, part number 1155. And you're going to get a couple different parts in here, and they are going to come separate. You're going to get your regulator right here. Set that here. You're going to get this piston. And you're going to get two four millimeter valve discs that are in here. Be careful, guys. Do not lose these. These are marked. They do go a certain orientation. You can see both of these have a black sharpie mark on them and uh, it's going to let you know which orientation that it's going to what orientation it will go in the regulator which uh, the black mark will go straight down against the set screw in the regulator we'll get to that shortly and then they also sent Part number 1312, which is the extra high pressure. This is the Belleville Springs, and uh, these do go in a certain orientation, and they do need to be lubricated to reduce friction. We'll also go over that. So let's go ahead and set this to the side. Again, this is part number 1155, and this is 1312. This is going in a 30 cal FX M3 impact. First thing we need to do is degas our gun. I did go ahead and unscrew the bottle, and this is degas. But just to show you what you need to do is you need to unscrew your bottle if you're not familiar with this procedure. And that is going to take your pressure off the gun from your delivery system, which is your bottle. So let's go ahead and set that bottle out of the way. 
Next thing that I typically do is you can pull your uh, cover off this, turn your gauge one quarter turn, let this vent out all the way, and that will vent your gas out of this regulator. Also, just to make sure all the air is out, cock and discharge any remaining air that might be in here. As you can tell, this one is fully degassed. I am going to go ahead and unscrew the gauge out of here and we'll screw it back by hand shortly once we get the, regulator, the new regulator in. Next thing you'll need to do is take this trigger guard off. We do have four screws, of course two are already out. I did take those out and this right here is just your dust cap for your fill valve. So I already did take two out because we did do uh, the video on installing this first stage regulator. I already had this off, but for those of you that are not installing the first stage regulator or might have already done it uh, or uh, are starting out just installing a second stage regulator, I want to go ahead and show you the entire process. So I did go ahead and temporarily put this back on. So you will have four screws in here course two of which have already been taken out and it's as simple as just unscrewing these let's take this trigger guard off Put the trigger guard to the side. That was with the two and a half mil hex, and we'll use a two mil, and that's going to be to take this cover right here. This cover actually is a trigger guard cover. You have two screws. Simply back those out. We will set these to the side. Take your cover plate, and this will expose your trigger and your pins. Now what we're needing to do at this point is we need to get into your regulator and remove it, and this trigger is blocking it. So to remove that is very simple. However, you do not want to lose the parts. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a little magnetic tool tray. Let's go ahead and put some of these parts in here where we do not lose them. There's only one pin that we have to take out and it is this trigger pivot pin right here. As you can see, when I depress this trigger, that actually comes forward Maybe kind of hard to see in here. And it is actuated on that trigger pin there. So we do need to remove that. And you can just take some needle nose pliers. Try not to scratch your gun. It should come straight out. Good recommendation is put a piece of tape or something over there on this side that if you want to make sure you don't scratch your gun up. Hold your trigger, just wiggle this out. Go ahead, do not lose your pin. Let's go ahead and put it in here. Carefully remove your trigger assembly. As you can see, it does have the spring. We're gonna go ahead and leave everything in this orientation and put this whole trigger mechanism right here. When we go in reverse, right here, you do have a recessed area. That's what captures your spring right there, so make sure when you put your trigger back in that that goes in place. The second stage regulator is located right here, and that's what we'll work on next. First thing you're going to want to do is take your two and a half millimeter hex 
and go ahead and back out your adjustment screw. At this point, I'll take something and just go ahead and remove your regulator adjustment screw right there. We're going to set that to the side. We will save that if we ever need to put this back in this gun. We will have it. Next thing, you still have the rest of your regulator in here. And to remove that, we'll need a 5 millimeter hex. Simply go ahead and put it in the center of your regulator. I'll loosen that and continue to back that out. And this is your regulator assembly here. Now you do have a piston and some Belleville washers in here. We can try to turn this upside down and see if it will fall out. If it does not, we can take some air pressure, apply where we've removed our gauge and put some back pressure on it and help us press this out. Put my finger here just to stop this and should be able to turn this over. We're going to let this fall into our hand. And this is the piston and the Belleville washers that we removed. And just go ahead and get some of these tools out of the way and I will show that stack to you. We'll go, we'll be going back in with a similar stack to this. However, it will be in a specific orientation for Huma's regulator. So what I am going to do, I am going to put this together, all these parts together. That way, if we do need to ever reassemble this, we will have these parts. Okay, now what we need to do is go ahead and start assembly on our Huma second stage regulator. Very simple, very straightforward. We do not want to lose any parts, so be very careful. One of these four millimeter Delrin valve discs, you will need one of these. And let me go ahead and give you a close up of this. As you can see, it does have a mark on it. That mark will face towards the regulator set screw, so it will go straight down in this orientation. You do not want to scratch anything up, so be very careful on all your brass parts. You start scratching stuff up, 
you can start having issues with leakages and stuff like that. So just be careful when you're doing stuff and putting stuff together. We will go ahead and put one of these back in the package since we will not need both of them. And we'll get our Bell Bill washers lined out and ready to go ahead and install as well. I'll go ahead and place this down that way this will show up and contrast a little bit easier. Now I'm going to show you something about these Belleville washers and see if we can get this on video. These do have a orientation that they have to go and they are slightly concaved. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that on camera. They are not perfectly flat. They do have a curvature. This one curves this way. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if we can see it better against, uh, let's see, let me get, hopefully you can see that this is concaved. So keep that in mind. Looks like we have nine washers. Again, we did have the uh, Delrin valve there. We do have our piston. And of course, we do have a regulator. Now, first thing we want to do on this regulator is make sure that this adjustment screw is backed out even with this slot. That way it is lined up. That way when you go to screw it in, you can actually put the proper size screwdriver in here and actually turn that, this in without damaging it. Now it does call for an 8 by 1.5 uh, screwdriver and uh, we're just going to go ahead and use one of our hollow ground screwdriver tips. I found the one that actually fits in this the best that will not slip off of that and that's the whole thing. You want to make sure that you are lined up and you're able to go ahead and stick this in there. That way you can tighten this up properly. Now we do need to go ahead and lubricate these parts. There is a O-ring inside here that we're gonna to attempt to lubricate. We're gonna lubricate this O-ring here. We're gonna lubricate this O-ring here. And we are gonna lubricate the Belleville washers as well. To do that, you can use silicone oil or silicone grease. Okay, for this, we'll go ahead and start lubricating everything. These I get at a hobby store. I actually use these. These are little pa detail paint brushes is what I actually use them for. However, it comes in handy when you're trying to lubricate O-rings inside. Okay, got that lubricated. Go ahead and lubricate the O-ring on the regulator. and lubricate the piston o-ring and we will lubricate our Belleville washers now you will need to download the uh, fitting instructions depending on what Belleville set that you have and make sure they go in the right orientation. And the instructions tell you 
exactly how to do that. Okay, first things first, we're going to go ahead and put the Belleville washers on. The extra high pressure is going to go, the orientation is the concave or cup side is going to go this orientation. So the cup is going to go in like that for the first washer. Then you want to flip the second one over. Where it's opposite, followed by one flipped over again. We're going to use eight of these for this particular one. We do have an extra here. Again, just keep on flipping these in the opposite orientation. Let me go ahead and get a see if I can get a close-up of this that way you can see how that is split there again we're going to put this the opposite orientation I'm just going to show you all what would happen if when it's opposite orientation you are going to have a gap if you stack them on top of each other in the same orientation of course they had lay flat. Hopefully you can see that. So we're going to keep on doing the reverse orientation on every one of these. And we have one more. And that completes our stack there. The first one, the concave is going to go this direction and this orientation and then you flip-flop every other one and your last one is actually going to be concave facing your regulator so we're going to set this right here to the side our next piece that we need is right here and this is the four mil Delrin valve and this valve disc it's going to go inside here and we're going to place it where the marker side is facing the set screw make sure you get it in the right orientation You can see it dropped in there. However, it's dropping in there the wrong direction. We're going to turn that. There's going to be some resistance there. Do not use a metal tool. You could scratch something up. Use something like this that you can get down in here and you can start working it down to the bottom. As you can see, we're going to press that down. Make sure it does not flip on you and it stays the right orientation. And we'll get that seated all the way to the bottom, like that. The stack will go in here in this orientation like this. And this will come apart really easy. So what we're going to do to help mitigate this falling apart, of course, the regulator's going to go back right there. So what we want to do, if we try to put this in like this this is likely to fall apart we don't want our Belleville washers to fall off or get out of orientation so what we can do to help us out is slightly point this muzzle down it's gonna be kind of hard for me to show you guys on camera I just reach back under here I'm gonna start this in once I've got it in, at that point, at that point I can go ahead and take my screwdriver, insert it, and we'll start tightening this. You do not want to over tighten anything where you strip anything, so just be careful.
We're going to screw this in just until it is hand tight. Do not over tighten it. That should be fine. And your regulator is installed. From here, we'll switch over. And we are going to screw the brass adjustment screw in all the way. When you feel it stop, you can stop at that point. That's where the resistance is. And we'll stop. You're going to feel some slight resistance once you get that all the way in. Stop at that point. Do not over tighten it. At this point, you can go ahead and cock your gun. We will install our gauge. And at this point, we're going to pressurize our rifle. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Make sure you save your spare parts. We have this extra Belleville washer. We will put that back in the bag. We also have our spare Delrin valve disc right there. Save that in case you need it in the future. Let's go ahead and install our bottle on and pressure up this gun. What we're going to look for is any pressure on this and we will start adjusting our pressure. My target pressure is going to be 95 bar to be back where I was originally. Now if I do need to adjust this I will adjust it at a later date as I'm doing my tune. But this is going to put it back to where I had it before install the new regulators. Okay. We're at approximately 160 bar on our first rig. We have no pressure on our second regulator and this is where we need to go ahead and start our adjustment. Now what we're going to do is insert our micro screwdriver inside and we're going to slowly counterclockwise back this out to adjust the pressure. Now we're going to keep an eye on this and we're going to do this slow. It takes very fine adjustments. We're at 50 bar. Gonna let it get stable. Increase just slightly. As I increase, I am stopping just to make sure that it has adequate time. If it has any residual pressure, 
make sure it doesn't creep any further. We're at 80 bar. As you can see, just very, very minute turns is going to increase this pressure significantly. Okay, we're at 90. Our target is 95. Let me go ahead and zoom on this a little bit more. Sorry, you're not going to be able to see me turn this. But it's still the same procedure, counterclockwise, extremely minute turns. And we're at 95 bar. Okay, at this point the regulator is installed. We are setting at 95 bar. I will watch this, make sure that we do not have any excessive creep or anything like that overnight. If we do need minor adjustments, it's simple as pulling your trigger simply back out and making your adjustment again as needed. Just keep in mind, if you need to increase your pressure after you have this set up, Let's say that uh, you, you want to increase this to 100 bar. You can go ahead and adjust this while it is under pressure for an increase of pressure. However, if you want to decrease your pressure, you will have to degas your gun to decrease this pressure. You cannot have pressure on that regulator when you decrease. If you do, you're going to damage your valve disc. Now you got extra valve disc if you need it. However, that's a lot of work to have to pull everything back out to replace that. Degas your gun if you lower the pressure. You cannot lower this with it under pressure. So keep that in mind. Hopefully we'll be at 95 and stay at 95 and we'll be good to go. We can fine tune all our rest of our adjustments and be fine with how it's set. So let's go ahead and get this gun back together. I'll go ahead and do a couple of test fires on it and make sure everything's staying consistent with our gauges. So first things first, let's go ahead and get our trigger reinstalled. And as I pointed out before, you do have a recessed area right here where that spring is going to go. Take your trigger pivot pin, okay, get it in the correct orientation, and reinstall that pin. Okay, I ran out of power on my camera, so hopefully I've got everything uh, on video. However, where we was left off at, we went ahead and we have our regulator adjusted to 95 bar. We're reinstalling our trigger. We went ahead and put our trigger assembly in. We actually put the pivot pin in, make sure it's all the way flush and goes down. At that point, go ahead and put your trigger uh, assembly cover on. Make sure you have your Huma Air regulated sticker loud and proud on there. So we want everybody to know we have the best regulator in the industry on our gun. Go ahead and insert your cover plate. At this point, let's go ahead and start our trigger guard. At 
as you can see this is a very straightforward and easy job with this this and our first stage HUMA regulator uh, replacement we should have better consistent shot to shot uh, accuracy and uh, our velocities on our pellet should be very very consistent you're going back with extremely high quality uh, regulators on this made out of the best materials very high precision machined and Huma's got great engineering guys There's a few other things I'd love to do this with Huma products I'm gonna have y'all go check out the video on our uh, QD uh, our quick disconnect for moderate the moderator uh, system that they offer uh, I do have a video on that y'all need to go check that out really cool where you can easily take off your moderator on and off and swap them from gun to gun and it only takes one third of a turn they have all kinds of products we're going to leave links in the description below go check out our friends at Huma Air uh, maybe at some point we can get in maybe like their tension barrel something like that like I say we're trying to get this ready as an RMAC gun and uh, I'd love to have as many high quality components as we can we do have the trigger guard back on make sure you don't lose your dust cover go ahead and put that back on okay at this point we got everything back together everything's good to go Got our first stage regulator in, go check out that video. We've got our second stage regulator in, which is this video. And don't forget guys to go check out my video on this moderator by Huma Air and their quick disconnect system for this moderator. Guys, check this out. Put it on one third turn and that's all there is. Get ready to take it off. One third turn, take it off very 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 simple love this it's actually amazing how they have this set up so again shout out to Huma Air let's go ahead and cycle this through a couple of shots right at 95 right just a little under 160 bar that's where we was at before everything is looking great so we're going to keep it right there we're going to go shoot this if we need to do any adjustments we can it's ready to go again guys go check out our friends at huma air i want to thank them for sending us these products to evaluate this is going on our armac gun and um proud to have their the regulators in here i know it's going to help our shock consistency out and that leads to better accuracy as well so guys go check them out you'll certainly do yourself a favor by checking out their products they have a wonderful array of products not only regulators like i said they have this quick detach system and they even have their own moderator system y'all go check out the videos on this as well i'll leave links down below for all this and y'all go see our friends at Hume Air. I think you'll be very, very happy. And, and guys, if you'd like to see some more of this content, let us know. Uh, maybe we can get in some more stuff. Maybe like a tension barrel, uh, some of their other items to really showcase some of their stuff. I'd love to get some more of their stuff on this gun. Absolutely stellar company. Um, you can't go wrong. Like I say, we've got a Kila. Benjamin Aquila that's non-regulated that we turn into a regulated gun with the regulators Very we got a whole insulation video on that So even if you don't have an FX you're looking for a good quality regulator for your gun If it's non-regulated go see if they got something that'll make it regulated If not if you got another gun that the regulators are not that great on it like this Impact they're so 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 we stepped up our game and got the best in the industry now. We got proper adequate reliable regulators in here and you can do the same with many many different guns they offer an entire product line that covers an array of brands not just fx so y'all go check them out like i said i've got a video on the benjamin and there's quite a few other guns tons of guns that they actually uh make products for so y'all go check them out again guys if you're subscribed 
thank you so much if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing hit that like button hit that notification button that way you know when we're putting out new content hit that thumbs up if you would i certainly appreciate it and as always guys i'll catch you on the next episode god bless Thank you.